Hello and welcome to After Effects Tech Desk. This video is made in response to somebody on the Reddit forum who was asking how to get this sort of distorted effect. And uh, I didn't really plan this one out too much, so uh, we're going to see me just kind of winging it. Let's just go ahead and I'm going to make a new comp. I did not have standard settings, so I'm going to pick that. And I will make, uh, I'm just going to make a solid first, and I'll pre-comp that. Uh, we'll call this the pre-screen. And we'll make this so that whatever we put in there, that will be uh, distorted. So let's come up with something so that it's... I think there's like color bars in here somewhere. No. Uh, anyways, here's what we'll do. I like to use uh, maybe fractal noise. And we can go to maybe the block. You can play with these settings. But actually, you know what I'm going to do is use mosaic add that on there and that's going to give us like this kind of chunky look and I think you know this can kind of help us all so uh, we can put in horizontal 16.9 and then we'll get some reference too so I think really all we need is um, probably corner pin corner pin is useful but it doesn't have any uh, way to bend it. So that could be good for 3D plane kind of stuff if you were, you know, trying to put this into, composite this into a scene and it was a flat screen without any distortion. Um, you might want to use this. But I think what we actually want here, I'll use this menu so that we can see where I'm coming from. I think, you know, that corner pin is under distort. It's up here. Corner pin. What we want, I think, is Bezier Warp, which is like corner pin, but it gives you these little handles, too. So, if you look at the controls here, there's the vertex, which is the point where it's at, and then the tangent is like the Bezier handle. And you can grab these, but it gives you power to uh, do this very evenly too. So uh, if we look back at our thing here, you know, we're kind of getting an arch up here and on the side. So we'll just do that here. And if you want to be real accurate about it, I think it looks like it's pretty subtle on the sides and then a little bit more extreme on the top. And you can just dial that into your taste. Um, here's something to look at is that you can use these numbers to align them. So it doesn't really matter the value, but if you make them nice even numbers, you can now go to your top right top right tangent, the same one, and make sure that that's at negative 60 also. And if we figure out what, um, do, let's figure out how far off center this is. So um, 960, because we're in a 10, 1920 by 1080 comp, so halfway through the comp, is 960, so that minus 730 is 230. So it's 230 off center. So we can just take that and do that math right in there. So plus 960. And now these are exactly symmetrical. You could also do some expressions if you want to uh, rig this so that you move one, and, but I don't think it's really all that necessary. Um, and you could do the same for the bottom too, and make sure that your <clears throat> your vertical displacement. This would down here be, I guess, sixty. 
No, it's not that one. Sometimes I just like to, it's easiest almost to just grab it and then see. So I guess that would be, um, not right, you can do, you can do the math and kind of figure that out. But anyways, it's pretty close. <clears throat> and now anything you put in here too. So if you went and put through some kind of photo or whatever, I've got these photos, stock photos from another project. So if we just drop one of those in there, I'll scale that down. I'm using Control Alt Shift G to fit it to the height, or H to fit it to the width. They can just kind of use the arrows to put it down. And there you go. Um, so that's one way using the Bezier warp. Other way you could try, and you might even combine these two, is just um, the bulge effect. And I guess um, that's also under distort. And this one I think is a little more process. I don't know. They might be both a little bit processor heavy. This one will bulge whatever is in there, and uh, that. You know, that might not be all that helpful for you. You have to make it so big that it can get to be really heavy. But if you make this thing large enough, or actually what you might want to do is pre-comp that and put it on an adjustment layer instead. And now you can just kind of scale, put whatever you want in there. But your scale is going to affect how much that's happening there. So uh, in here with this, you have just a height. And you could even go that way with it. There's a taper to kind of determine how that um, you know tapers off on the curve. So you can kind of play with that a little bit. And <clears throat> there's a setting also. So if pin all, I guess that is going to make it so that you don't really affect the edges that much. I don't know. That might have a different effect if you're doing it on a comp itself. Yeah, see, it's not really affecting the edges then. It's pinning those edges. But on an adjustment layer, it's treating the whole frame anyway. So I hope that helped and was useful for how to get this effect. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please like, subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers by the end of August. So help me reach that goal. Hit that button. Tell your friends and uh, send in any other ideas or requests. If you have any questions about this one, put them in the comments. And thanks as always. I'll see you next time.